Hello, Pythoneers. Today, we're diving into the world of environment variables using the .env module. Are you ready to streamline your project setup? If you want to handle variables like a pro, you're in the right place. We'll start with the basic setup and then explore the various files I've created to help you manage your environment variables efficiently. Whether you're a terminal enthusiast or prefer working in a script, I've got you covered. Let's kick things off with the basics and set up our environment for success. Let's dive in. First, we need to make the .env module available. So let's import it with the load.env function and install it using the command pip install python-.env. This will only take a moment. Then, let's explore the possibilities with the .env module. I've created three files that I'll walk you through. First up is the .env file which is the default used by all functions unless specified otherwise. Here, I've added three environment variables. You can pass the value of one variable to another using the doll curly brackets syntax. While it's common to see values in quotes, it's not strictly required because Python handles them automatically. However, I still recommend using quotes for clarity. Next is my custom env file named .secrets.env. This is great for organizing or categorizing your environment variables. In this file, I've added two variables, and I'll show you later how to manage these different files. Finally, we have the .gitignore file. Please remember to add all your env files here if you're using a git system. This keeps your sensitive data secure. Now, let's jump back to the pi file and put these variables to work. First, we need to initialize them by loading the .env file with the load.env function. Like I mentioned earlier, if you use it without specifying another file, it defaults to the .env file. Next, let's read and print these variables. You have two options. First, you can use the os.getenv function to load, for example, the domain variable. Note, if the variable doesn't exist, this method simply returns none. Alternatively, you can use the os.environ, which acts like a dictionary-like Python object, to access the domain variable. But if the variable is missing, it raises a key error, which will break the code unless we handle it. I'll print both to the terminal to show you that they load the same variable. And that's the basics of storing and accessing environment variables with python.env. Now let me show you a way to handle the variables like a pro, especially if you prefer working in the terminal. The module includes a specific CLI version that we can utilize. For this, we need to install the python.env CLI using the command pip install python-.env and then CLI in square brackets, written in quotes. This tool allows us to work with environment variables directly from the command line. One of the main features is creating and storing new variables in a .env file. For that, we use the command .env set followed by the key and value. For example, we can set main user to foo. This gets added directly to the .env file, making it immediately available for future use. If we want to add a variable to a different .env file, like the secrets file, we use the dash f file name option. For example, to add key with the value 123456 to the secrets file, run .env dash f dot secrets dot env set key with 23456. This helps separate and organize sensitive data by file for better management. To view all variables in the default.env file, use the .env list command. To see variables from another file, like .secrets.env, run .env-f.secrets.env list. Both commands show the variables from the specified file. You can even format this output as JSON by adding the dash dash format equals JSON option making it easier to handle and use programmatically in your applications, or if you need to export the list for other purposes. If you ever get stuck or need more information, the .env-help command is a quick and easy way to get information to the full range of available options. It's always worth a look. Lastly, to run your Python file while ensuring all environment variables are correctly loaded, you can use the .env-run pythonyourscript.py command. This loads all the environment variables from the .env file into your Python environment, allowing your script to access them without needing to manually configure anything. And that's it. I paste a summary of this in the code and upload it to the linked GitHub below the video. Let's take a short break and let me thank you for watching until here. If you like this video, please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you don't do yet. Let's move on to more functions. Next, I'll show you the .env values function. 
This works like the list command in the CLI, but directly in code. It lets us read and display all variables from an env file so we can work with it in the further script. First, we import the function. Then we assign the results of both env files to variables so we can work with it. I start by reading the variables from the .env file using .env values. You could leave the parameter empty to use the default file, but it's clearer if you specify it. As you can see, we can pass the file as a parameter. So I did the same for the secrets env file and assign them to the config secrets variable. To show you the results, I print both variables to the console. What we get back is an ordered dict object containing a JSON-like string of the variables for both files. Because it's a dict, you can access the values by looking up for the key, as I show you here, with the domain from the config variable. At the end of the video, I'll show you some advanced config options for this function. What if you don't want to store your env variables in a file on your project's file system? Maybe you're using a backend, server, or cloud tool for this. That's where the load.env function stream parameter comes in. Let me demonstrate this, just simulated for now, so you get the idea. First, I use stringIO to simulate a JSON object that contains a variable. You can pass this directly to the stream parameter in the load.env function. I know using a static string may seem odd, but imagine this is the output of a parsing function that fetches variables from external sources, not just your local files. Like I said earlier, you can grab variables from your backend, server, or cloud and stream them to the function this way. If you're having issues loading variables from an env file, this section might help. If a variable exists both in the env file and in your system environment, the system version will by default be loaded. Let me show you an example with the user. There is a user variable with the value foo in the secrets env file, but when I try to access and print it, I get a completely different user because my system environment already contains my username coding together. To change this and load the variable from the env file, we need to set the override parameter to true in the load.env function. This forces the function to prioritize variables from the env file over the system environment when both exist. By default, this parameter is set to false, which means it prefers the environment over the file. If you are using iPython, such as in Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab, you need to take some additional steps to make the .env module available. First, run the command %load underscore x.env to import the extension into your session. Then use the command %env to actively load the default .env file into your session. If you want to use a specific path or file, you can pass that to the path and file parameter in the %env command to make it available. Like I show you here, with the path, your slash path slash dot env. And that's it. Now you can use everything as already shown in the video. Before we end the video, there's one last thing I want to show you regarding the dot env values function. If you're heavily using env variables, you can take advantage of a more advanced method for loading them. I'll cover this quickly, but if you'd like a more detailed video on this topic, let me know in the comments. Instead of loading just one env file, you can use this syntax to load from multiple env files. This is a great way to structure your env variables by adding specifications after the .env name, such as shared or secrets. I also want to highlight the double asterisk at the beginning of the .env values function. The os.environ allows you to specify whether you want to override the system environment variables with these values, making them available for all projects. This can be useful in certain cases. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I also recommend checking out the video on the left to further improve your Python skills.